This weekend will mark a decade since that historic flooding in Larimer County wiped out homes and killed nine people. The town of Lyons was the epicenter of all that destruction. And here we are 10 years later and rebuilding is still underway. But as our Rob Harris shows us, in some ways, the restoration efforts have become visual reminders of the way life has changed forever for the people there. Hey, Priscilla. Hi. <laughs> Nice house. Thank you. Priscilla Cohan has lived at this address in Lyons for 27 years. She calls it the house that Lyons built. Because so many volunteer hours went into this house. The house that Lyons built stands tall, like many houses in Lyons. But it wasn't always this way. This house was literally on the ground. It was built in 1903, and it had what's called a rubble foundation. You stepped up about four and a half inches to get into the house. Now it's what? <laughs> yeah, it's five, four feet. Ten years ago, Cohan's home was one of many in Lyons hit by floodwaters. Everything was inundated. Everything was underwater. It was 40 inches of water and silt in there. As she and her neighbors began to take stock of the damages and clean up, they were presented with a choice. They could rebuild, but only if they elevated their homes off the ground. Why did you decide to rebuild here and not move somewhere else after the flood? Um, very good question. I. I didn't have it of two minds. Hmm. I couldn't do both. I just sort of committed early on that that's what I was going to do, and I didn't really look back. The tall foundations of homes are just one visual reminder of the 2013 flood. Not everyone in Lyons chose to stay. Those in the path of the water were given another option. They were called the Christmas house because they had Christmas decorations everywhere, and it inspired everybody else in Lyons to put decorations up. Christmas in Lyons started here. Christmas in Lyons started here. Liz Early is the former chair of the Lyons Community Foundation, which raised a million dollars in the aftermath of the flood to help victims. She's met us here. It was two fairly big pieces of property. At two lots off 2nd Avenue that now sit empty, right on the banks of the St. Vrain Creek. People's homes were destroyed, and so they had a choice. They could either rebuild their homes, or they could take the money from the 404 buyout program and take that money and move elsewhere. So this is now open space that can no longer be built on. Ever? Ever. It's still sad to me, and I remember these lovely little homes. I'm sad that they no longer can be part of their communities. Empty lots and lions symbolize those permanently displaced from their former homes. Once I moved to Longmont, I figured I could never come back to Lyons. But a third group of people are now emerging those who now have a chance to return. Cover these up with grass sod. Gabri Cornell is getting ready to move into her new home. I was thinking of putting some plants in pots out front to make it look pretty. Construction's nearing completion on 40 units of affordable housing, a mix of homes and townhomes for rent. It's a joint project between the city of Lyons and Summit Housing to provide homes to those priced out of Lyons in the past 10 years and priorities being given to those who were living here the day of the flood. I was trying to come back. I kept looking for places to rent, but they were either not affordable or there was just very little available. I'm so full of gratitude for everybody who's worked on this so hard, and I'm so full of gratitude for the opportunity to be able to live here. Even if the landscape and the faces of Lyons have changed, Cornell recognizes its beauty as if she never left. I'm so full of gratitude that I got this opportunity to have this beautiful house. For Denver 7, out of every window you look, there is amazing views. I'm Rob Harris. A beautiful community there in Larimer County is commemorating the 10 year anniversary of the flood tomorrow. The commemoration is a celebration of the volunteer spirit of the community and the many who have worked to rebuild and protect it. It begins at 1130 at Glen Haven Town Hall. It's free and open to the public.